So thank you, Nick, uh, you know, for being here and for taking time out of your very busy schedule. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. A lot of our CIOs would like to ask you a question, and I'm probably representing a room full of, say, a thousand CIOs. Some of them have actually, some of them have embraced cloud technology. Some of them haven't. Some of them have been early adopters. Some haven't. Right. So this question is really uh, for them. It's really by them to you. Uh, the question is that, how do you think? this is going to change the IT landscape, the economic landscape, the IT organization in general. Is this a threat? Is this an opportunity? What would your guidance to them be? Well, w one thing I've been struck by in, in, in talking to CIOs and other IT managers recently is that you know the skepticism, and even in some cases the fear of the cloud that was prevalent three years ago, two years ago, a lot of that's gone away. I mean, there are still some CIOs, I think, who are ner nervous about the cloud and stuff. But what amazes me is that most CIOs today, I think, see this as an opportunity. Uh, and not only a, a technological opportunity, but an organizational opportunity, an opportunity to redefine their own roles. And for, for instance, I was, uh, I, I was recently at a panel discussion of of CIOs in, in Silicon Valley, and it was quite clear that as one of them said, you know, the cloud is making making us in our position more relevant, not less relevant. And the reason is, is because it it's shifting the profile of the CIO in the IT organization away from non-strategic types of work and investment, uh, you know, maintaining your own data center, maintaining your own uh, hardware and applications, those kind of jobs that are very important but don't differentiate your your business in ter terms of its core uh, sources of strategic advantage. They're shifting the IT organization away from that non-differentiated types of activity toward the ability to connect services with individual business units and their particular strategies, sources of advantage and stuff. And so. In some ways, it's ironical because because I think one of the implications of the cloud is that many IT organizations are going to shrink in terms of headcount as you push more administrative and maintenance type jobs out into uh, onto the the cloud supplier. But on the other hand, what you'll see and what we're already seeing, particularly among aggressive adopters of the cloud, is that the people who remain tend to be much more high profile, much more business focused people, people who are able to make, uh, it's almost a brokerage role in some ways between this set of services, crucial services to your business, and the various you know, sources of strategic advantage within different lines of business in your company. And increasingly the IT organization kind of is the interface between those two and providing uh, as much really business expertise as technological expertise. And so there's a lot of enthusiasm. I think among uh, among CIOs today, with what the cloud enables them to do, both technologically and in terms of their own, in their organization's profile and role uh, in the general business. Right. So, a question on that, Nick, is that infrastructure, as we know it, road, railroads, transportation systems, they accelerated speed of movement, people, ideas, goods. That created a lot of opportunities, that created jobs. You had mom and pop shops come up next to the roadsides and next to the freeways. That in turn gave urbanization, civilization, people could move from villages to towns, towns to cities. New industrialization came up. That led to cre creation of more jobs. In this infrastructure technology world, which we are talking about, which you coined, is actually taking jobs away. It's actually reduction of jobs. It's actually contraction. It's actually taking the means away. And human beings are human, eventually, I mean, and there is this emotion uh, associated with it. So when you actually go back to the IT organization and you talk to the human in the IT person, how do you allay their fears and, and you know, what kind of guidance do you really give them? Well, I mean, to some extent you can't allay all those fears because some of the fears are actually very well founded in that there's no question that as the power of information technology increases, the sets of jobs that it can replace or at least reduce demand for 
uh, increases. Uh, so you get, you get employment effects, and we've always had this. And the big question in general for the economy is, you know, is, is IT ultimately destroying more jobs than it creates? And I think there's, you know, so far, you know, our hope is that that won't turn out to be true. It certainly wasn't true with the Industrial Revolution, where, which also got rid of some jobs but created many more in its place. But, but so far, there's no clear, unfortunately, there's no clear evidence that, that IT investments are, are creating big new areas of employment, particularly well-paid employment. But within the IT organization itself, I mean, I think there's no question that one of the effects of centralization is, uh, in the automation that often goes along with centralization, is a reduction in the demand for certain kinds of IT skills. Uh, the more, you know, data center maintenance, uh, application administrators, and so forth. Uh, I think, you know, areas of employment for those type of skills may well come down in the future. You know, some of them will be sucked up by the supplier side, but one way that the cloud suppliers compete is to be very efficient and very automated and in, 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 in thus, you know, running a fairly uh, labor, uh, non-labor intensive operation. On the other hand, I, I think what, what we continue to see in, in, in IT more broadly defined is that there are constant shifts in what skills are valuable. Um, and they're still, you know, we're still, if you look throughout the economy, you see that people who are very smart programmers, very smart uh, in building interfaces, very smart in kind of figuring out the, all the different ways, whether it's social networking or whether it's uh, internal collaboration in companies, how computers can, can help those types of activities, those become uh, areas of kind of booming employment, um, even if you know they might not influence the entire economy. So I think I think the you know for for internal IT staff, what's really important is looking out ahead at what skills are going to become more valuable in the marketplace in the future, what skills are going to be less valuable, and make making sure in your own personal career you make a skills transition if that's what's necessary, and you begin to look ahead. Uh, you know, to what part of your skill set needs to be strengthened, what part is going to be less important, and kind of make the transition with the technology itself. Right, right. Great, Nick. So, thank you so much for your time and all the best for you afterward, and, and we really appreciate your insight and your comments. Thanks very much, Anupam.